Hey everybody, Corona Davis Z up here, Black Filmmakers Matter, and today we have the most awesome Andrew Garcia. Hey Andrew. Hey, how's it going? It's going great. Great talking to you, man. I'm glad you're here. Um, can you tell us your title or titles? Because I know we wear many hats. What are your titles? Definitely. I mean, I came up as a cinematographer, came up as a DP. Um, I went to school in New York. Um, that's kind of where I learned uh, the process of being a cinematographer and kind of uh, honing in on what my preferences are cinematically and all that. And through that, realizing that I really want to direct. Um, and as, as we all know, like being these independent filmmakers, we uh, need to craft our own voice and kind of show other people um, what we love so much. So through that, you know, I was also editing my own things. And so, you know, a bit of directing, a bit of DPing, a bit of editing. So kind of just like having a hand in everything to be able to show what the language is. Um, so that's a little so bit about can I ask you? Can I ask you really quick what's your favorite thing since you do so many things? I think my favorite is directing right now, for sure. I think it, it changes from here, here and then, but I think whenever I watch a movie that's inspiring, I'm just like, yeah, directing is, is the way. Okay, and can you tell us about the stories you like to tell the most? Yeah, I think, um, um, you know, being Latino, I really want to uh, bring these stories that uh, incorporate my background. I'm Cuban, Puerto Rican, incorporate my background. I'm from Miami. Um, it's a weird, uh, kind of wild place that there's so many stories that you grew up around um, and kind of incorporating with the stories that we see in Hollywood. Um, so you're kind of mixing these flavors that that we um, have seen before, but with a twist that feels fresh and new um, and can just uh, bring in this Latino audience or other audiences that, that um, can connect to it as well. Okay. And can you tell us about a current project you're working on or that you put out? Yeah, we, um, you and I were just talking about um, my thesis project that I just shot in, in Puerto Rico in, in 2019. Um, and that happened right after Hurricane Maria. Um, and I just felt like it was, uh, if there's anything I could do to help, it would be to just like raise any type of awareness, you know. Um, so with a small crew, we went down there and told this docu-narrative story about a family trying to get clean water, um, especially because of like how difficult it was there and um uh yeah it was a really special project it was really difficult we were going through some of the same things that the local the locals were going through down there um but i think the, my crew and i were, were just as passionate about uh what was going on and and through that we were able to get distribution through hbo um mm -hmm. and and you know spread the word about what was going on um and i think with that project i really found what stories I love to tell, that is stories about underrepresented communities, um, about either environmental struggles um, or just uh, societal struggles that that uh, Latinos or other, other people are going through. And so my new film, um, I just fin finished a short film. It's been doing some festivals and now we're looking for distribution. Um, it's about a Cuban rafter who has come to Miami uh, from Cuba in, in during the raft crisis and now finds herself um, 20 years later kind of reliving her, her trauma of uh, having come to the States after Fidel Castro's death. Just everything's kind of just like flooding back. Uh, her, her memories are kind of flooding back and it kind of just reminds her of, of uh, that plight that she has gone through uh, to be in Miami um, as a single mother. She was pregnant on the way to Miami. Okay. Um, and so I think that that's just, again, another real struggle that immigrants, um, not just Latinos, but immigrants all around, just um, there are events that happen, not just a, a, a dictator passing or something like that, but there are events that happen in your life externally or internally that that remind you of, of the struggles that that we've gone through. So, um, okay. and, how, and how to overcome those. Yeah. Okay. So you're a helper. I try to be, yeah. Yeah you know you are um what was the pivotal moment in your life when you decided that your projects your films you wanted to help more help people than entertain um 
That's a good when question. did you see that? Yeah, when did you say, no, we need some films that's going to help such and such and such? Well, I think, I think we see so much just work that you either just scroll by on your phone um, or just even when I was in school, you know, like I, I think work now is so uh, churned out, you know, that, um, but when you see that, that piece or something that really speaks to you, why did, why did it speak to you? You know, cause it tried to say something that it tried to say something deeper that, that connected with you, you know, how can, yeah. and that's something that I, yeah, that's something that I want to make people feel in my work. You know, I don't want someone to just, you know, see it on Instagram and be like, cool. And then just keep going, you know, like I'm not, I'm not in this business to like have cool things out in the world. Uh, I want it to look cool and also be able to speak to um, wow. these audiences, you know? So I think, I think, it's a combination of a lot of things. It's it's what's out there already, and what is being and and how much of that is just being pushed onto us as well. Okay, so when I say the word diversity in our industry, the word what comes to your mind? Personal it could be negative, positive. What yeah. what comes to your mind? I think I think personal experience, like just injecting more personal experience, like you know, so many cultural backgrounds are mixing like more than ever now, you know, it's like people have very different experiences than they did 20, 30, 40 years ago. And I think that um, with these mixes of experiences, like there are new fresh stories, new, new struggles, new um, just experiences all around that, that I would love to know about that. I think other people would love to know about, um, not in a negative way, but also in a positive way, you know? Um, uh, and I just think it makes for really interesting narratives. Um, I'm yeah. so glad you said that, not just in a negative way. A story doesn't have to grab us just by negativity. Mm -hmm. You're right. I love mm -hmm. God you're saying so much. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. So, um, what's a bit of advice for a new filmmaker, old filmmaker? What's some advice you could give a young person? I think um, it's something that that I've I've said to a few a few of my peers. Um, just I think die die on your own hill. You know, uh, stick to your idea. You know, there's a reason why you are feeling passionate about it. Um, uh, it's it's this this industry is really really hard and we hear a lot of no's. Um, I'm I'm constantly hearing them. People that I look up to are constantly hearing them, and we forget because we only see the wins. We only see the wins on Instagram. We only see the wins on online, and we forget like how hard it really is. Um, and it can be discouraging, um, but it's just because there's amazing ideas out there. There's a lot of them. It doesn't mean that that yours is not good. It doesn't mean mine is not good. Um, but I think we have to remind ourselves that there's a reason why we we started the journey on this idea or started the journey on this filmmaking path. Um, and that's because we feel passionate about it. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, die on your own hill, stick stick to it and and just remind yourself, try to remind yourself why you're doing it. And, and there's more people rooting for you than you think. That's right. Andrew, what's... Um... what's like a no-no on your set like i ask filmmakers we have people not showing up people not coming on time you know forgetting lines what's like something that would totally turn a cinematographer director producer off i mean those are all those are all great examples i'm i'm lucky that i i really haven't had too many bad set experiences both like with the talent or with crew side but I think that, I mean, that starts with just like understanding who you're, who you're bringing onto your set as well. Like, you know, any kind of like, I think as, as Latinos, like you don't talk back, you don't talk back to your parents or like that, you know? Like, so, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it's not about any kind of like hierarchy leadership. Don't talk to me that way, but it's like, yeah, I mean, just show people respect. That's all, that's all we're here for. Show people respect. Listen, you know, I, I came up, um, one of my first jobs, I was like a karate instructor. And, and I still think about this one way of talking to people that I still use on set. And he taught me uh, praise, correct praise. So it's like, you know, um, I'm not I'm not going to 
go up to an actor and be like, this is bad, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, you're doing this really great. Let's try it this way. And then kind of remind them what they're still doing well, you know? So, um, and yeah, I think just like, any type of disrespect is just a no-no, you know, on set okay. and just making sure that any of everybody's just being listened to. And um, yeah, just- I like that, if, everybody being listened to. Yeah, Perfect if there's any type of suggestions, listen first, talk after. Okay. And what do you want your material, your projects, your work to say to the masses, to your audience? What's the message you're trying to get through? I think that um, there's, I don't want anybody to feel like forgotten. You know, I think that there's, uh, there's a, there's a mainstream media out there with, with a large focus on certain types of people. And I, I think some people do feel forgotten or if they're on screen, it's for a certain type of role or type of narrative. And, you know, I think like uh, there's a lot of other directors that feel similarly and that are trying to do the same thing, but, um, you know, not to, not to make certain groups of people feel pigeonholed in certain roles and like, you know, just reminding that like anybody can, can be the forefront of a narrative, you know, um, and that nobody can, nobody has to feel forgotten. No narratives uh, have to kind of like be left on the on the floor. So um, again, just uplifting, uplifting the the narratives from where we come from. And that, again, like those personal experiences, those stories that you're like, nobody's going to care about this. Like, people will care. So um, yeah, we want to hear them. That's I'm I'm literally trying to keep it together, guys. Um, um... I'm getting emotional because this you you're saying so much truth. You're telling so much truth. Um, thank you so much, Andrew. Any other advice you think you know young people should know or people trying to get in our shoes should know? Anything you think? Um, I think there's there's one thing I, I used to work at at um this this media company, and we would interview some celebrities that would come in. And this, there was always a final question that we would ask them. And it would be like, what advice would you give like your younger self? And I think like at, at any point of your career, you know, if you've been doing this for two years, if you're doing five years, 10 years, there's always something we can probably tell ourselves or remind ourselves that we like have learned from. So I think it's like, it's, it's interesting when I try to look back, um, you realize how much you've learned and how much you've grown already. And we don't see that within ourselves. We don't see that in the day to day. Um, but when you really sit and think like, Oh, what would I have done? Like, what would I tell myself five years ago? You know, like, um, I think that's where you see the most growth and, and it's, and at least for me, it's a motivating factor in, in just knowing that the train's going to continue moving forward and, um, you're just, you're sticking to it. Andrew, good God. Thank you so much <laughs> for you. your deep and depth interview. Man, one of my favorites. Thank you so much. <laughs> Andrew you. Garcia, everybody. Andrew, you have a website you want to share? I out? do. It's uh, andrew garcia.com. And um, if you want to look at some of my work on Instagram as well, it's rosepapi305. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, check it out. I would love to. Would love to hear from from you guys and and uh, see some of some of the audience work as well. Um, and I can't wait to watch your work too. Thank you. And we're close by, so we could you know do lunch do a little project or something. Let's yeah, do let's do it. Absolutely. Awesome. Andrew Garcia, everyone. Black filmmakers matter. With Corona Davis, be out. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much.